Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this Daily Slash Weekly Race Guide. This is week 48, so we're near the end of the year now, and this one's a bit of a weird one. It feels very much sponsor-esque, let's be honest. Uh, we're at race A, first of all, where we're at Fuji. Uh, this is the one with the chicane, if you're interested in that. Let's have a look at the race details then. We are racing three laps here at Fuji. It's a grid start, and we are on sports hard tyres and all the usual settings as per normal with race A. Now, we are racing the Toyota Crown Athlete, which is not a car I would particularly want to race, if I'm honest. It's very boaty. Uh, it does some very weird stuff with weight transitions. Uh, but let's jump to the race, and I'll talk you through some tips and tricks uh, and how to steer the boat. Here we are then at the start of the grid. So obviously this car is provided for you, so you don't get any liveries with this one. You just pick the colour you want to pick. I went with red for... I don't know why. I just decided to go for red. I didn't fancy white or black, but there we go. Someone's got the window wipers on there. I don't think it's going to rain, but let's get ready with a start. You will need traction control just a little bit here at the start. Um, so I'll whack it on one, of course. And off we go here. You'll notice that Louis guy over there. He's decided to win a race. Just completely impedes. Uh, the Belgium driver next to me. Anyway, let's head towards turn one. This is going to be very sketchy, especially in the lower split lobbies. So just be careful here. Brake extremely early. Uh, as you see, I brake very early. I'm just releasing the brakes as I then keep it tight as possible. If you're on the outside, your boat could get sent to Narnia there. So just be careful. Um, as I say, the lower the, the lower the split, the more carnage you're going to have at turn one, if I'm honest. Heading towards turn two, then. This is an interesting one. There's a lot of weight transfer that happens here. So you'll notice that I start rolling off, especially to, later on in the race. I roll off quite quickly with the car and, and make sure the weight is settled. Now, going through here, as I always say, do not break, because if you break, stuff like that happens, like that Spaniard did there. And you'll notice a lot of people just losing their rear end a little bit here. A little bit of contact here, there, and everywhere. As we head towards the braking zone, uh, the Spaniard just braked a little bit early for me in front, but, you know, it's my my fault at the end of the day, so I just clash into the rear of them, but uh, they leave a nice little gap on the exit, so I'll steal that one, thank you very much, as uh, we're looking to get past the Belgian driver as well, another Spaniard in front, now obviously the next pure carnage moment on this circuit is the chicane coming up here, so I'm on the inside here to try and avoid that carnage, and even so, we nearly stopped on the corner, everyone's sort of doing it fairly clean here actually, so you know, shout out to everybody, uh, quick short shift to third. There's eight gears in this car, weirdly. Uh, not that you ever get anywhere near eighth gear, but there we go, as we then come into the right-hander. So, very close racing. Feels very slow motion like racing, you know. It feels like we're going one mile an hour here. As so I just go on the inside of the Spaniard. Let's try and get that done. Try and avoid hitting the Belgian driver as they come across as well. So, we are in some good racing, to be honest, because it's so slow motion. Feels like the Toyota Yaris earlier in the week, to be honest. Uh, oh, sorry, last week, should I say, as we then go towards the last corner. As they get it all sorts of wrong, but fortunately, they sort of overcorrect it, so it gives us a bit of room here. So, penalty line there, very dangerous to get penalties, of course, because you're just going to get dropped, as uh, Jim there is about to get dropped, unfortunately for him. And uh, shout out to you, because you said hello in chat as we head down towards turn one. And we're going to go to the lap guide here, uh, and you can see Slipstream having an impact here. We're going to catch the Frenchman in front. Uh, so heading towards turn one, uh, you're actually breaking a lot earlier than you normally would. Now, I'm breaking even earlier here just because I wasn't sure, but I was on the third lap. That that lamp post on the right side, perfect brake marker. Use that to your advantage there. Maybe brake just before it if you're a little bit unsure. You can see I've released a little bit there um, just because I broke a little bit early. I see somebody go to Narnia there. But, uh, oh yeah, the Spaniard went for a really, I would say crazy dive bomb, but he made it work to be fair. It was, you know, it was a clean move at the end of the day. Uh, it's a fair play to Elmo there. Uh, is Elmo a Muppet, actually? A Mupp from Muppets? I don't know. Uh, as we head towards turn two, anyway, the 100 meter board is the best place here. And as I said before, I'm rolling off the brakes here. I'm not going straight off. I roll off the brakes quite quickly. That's just to make sure the car stays a little bit settled. You see there, I was slowly coming off as we come through here. Now, as I said before, do not brake for this right-hander. Just lift off. Let the car roll around. You see, I'm just bouncing the throttle. You see, if people brake, they just instantly get oversteer, understeer, just any form of steer. Uh, and then we head towards this left-hander. Now, I'm going to use the 50 meter, but I'm braking a little bit before that. Um, so I recommend you brake a little bit before this as well. To be honest, if you brake on the 50, you're going to go a little bit deep. Um, so just brake just before, and you can see I'm just trying to get around here. I left a little bit of space on the inside. Because uh, I know that I knew they were still fighting there, but we'll leave there in fourth. And we're going to head down towards the chicken now, the very sharp chicken as well. So, as you head down here, the very obvious brake mark here, of course, it is the Dunlop sign as we just get to that. Now, there we go. Nice and easy for you there. Uh, probably shouldn't have even stopped it, to be honest. Uh, but just be careful of dives down the inside. You're about to see a launch and a half on the radar here. Um, as you see them come from <laughs> two cars back, basically. Uh, and 
I mean, they just get it stopped, but I had to take pure avoiding action there. Fortunately, we survive it, and we continue on out of there. Now we have one of my favourite markers here at the circuit on the right side. Those lights, very nice markers. So you basically just dab the brake, turn in. Sometimes you might, even if you're going quite slowly, not even dab the brake and just turn in and bounce the throttle, uh, you know, just to make sure you clip that apex. Obviously, we've got a driver on our inside. We can't really clip the apex at the moment. But we'll stay on the inside here as we head towards this left. Again, the end of that curb on the left maybe is where you want a marker. But we're going that slow. It's not actually worthwhile doing. As they went for the launch there. But it didn't quite work this time. As we continue towards the right now. And obviously, again, the barrier. The end of the barrier. That's what I use all the time at Fuji. It's a really good reference for the last corner here. To really nail a line that you want and the braking you want. Uh, so use that marker on the right hand side here. Now, many lines you can take here, of course. You saw me take a wide line on lap one. That's a more tight line on lap two. Uh, and I take the a wider line on lap three because what I want to do is have a run on the Frenchman up front. But if I look behind myself, first of all, and we look back. Well, look at that. We catch up to the Frenchman that quickly. It's a secret hack I've got. Anyway, head towards the line. We go for a run with Slipstream. Not going to quite work out there, but that's race A. So... I mean, you can have fun on it, but it's not a car particularly light racing. It's a bit weird, to be honest, but uh, there it is for you. Anyway, let's head towards race B then, where we head to Germany. And we're at the Nürburgring, but just the GP section, fortunately, because if it was the Nordschleife, I would have just been like, oh, no. But yes, as you can see, it's a whole or all German combo here. But let's have a look at the race details first of all. We're racing three laps here at the Nürburgring GP. It's a grid start once again. And run sports hard tyres with the rest of it being the same as always. Feels very much like another race A if I'm honest, not a race B. But hey, there we go. We get two road cars this week. Uh, and as you can see, we are in the Porsche 911 997 GT3 car. Uh, I suppose they're trying to create some form of Porsche Cup, maybe? I don't know. Uh, let's jump to the race then, where you're going to see the launch of the century. Uh, as well as a little bit of a lap guide, of course. And so actually some decent racing, to be honest. Here we are then at the start. Now, we can have liveries in this. You do have to go buy the car. So, you know, it's not provided for you. Uh, and, you know, we have some interesting liveries. There's a Mentos one right at the front there. But I just bought the car and jumped straight in. So I went for yellow, of course, because that's what the channel is sort of made of. Yellow and pink at the moment. But, you know, it's originally yellow. Um, so let's get ready with the start. Try to control on one here. You will need it a little bit. You just see it working there down in the bottom right. And then to zero. Now, this car... Doesn't have very good brakes, if I'm honest, um, as you will find out during this race. But uh, as you head towards turn one, you really want to be on the inside. But I go for a very risky outside maneuver. I was expecting to be absolutely narnied here, as that driver in front got narnied. But uh, fortunately, because we're starting near the back, it didn't happen. But be careful being on the outside there. Uh, but I knew that was going to happen with the Croatian. So I was like, okay, I'll try and get on the inside here. You know, stay on the inside. Hopefully, we can get in a few positions. We are making quite good ground here um, as we head in towards this left. Again, stay, you know, get on that little cobbled bit area. There, it loves a grip there. By the way, it'll turn your car around for days. As we come through here, you see Fred up ahead there to check with a two second penalty. And uh, who's that? That's uh, Nick again, uh, who's got four second penalty. Wow, rip to you, my friend. As we head towards the left end, just trying to maintain this P7 at the moment. Can't remember where we started, to be honest. It was uh, you know, quite far back here. So we made some serious moves early on. You know, a few mistakes here, there, and everywhere. And you're probably already noticing the brakes being a bit rubbish here, but. Uh, the Italian goes to the right, the check stays on the racing line, but we get both positions up to P5 then, in towards the hairpin we go, as you see, oh, Shumi goes off there, and it's mainly because of that Frenchman there, that Didier bloke, well, he's going to come back into the mix very soon as well, for some reason he was flashing his lights at me in all this, I have no idea why, but uh, coming through here, we survive it for now, and then in towards the right, so P3 at the moment, not a bad job so far, in one lap really, P... 12 or 13 or wherever we started to P3. So, so coming to this left, we broke a little bit early there. We get around the corner all the same. Did he uh, obviously trying to outbreak me from Narnia and trying to come back to the normal realm of life, but uh, not working out so far. Anyway, we're going to head towards the chicken. Uh, and the key thing is look at that gap, look at the radar, and look what happened here because this is one hell of a launch. Look at that, seven and a half temps back. And. Yeah, and he doesn't even get a track reset. He doesn't even get a track reset. <laughs> he just gets a track cut penalty, and I get the... Oh. Thank you, Gran Turismo, and I get an SR down after all of that as well. How is that even possible? It should be a track reset all the way back, but uh, obviously not. But the good news, I suppose, is we get a decent race here now with the Dutchman of Goalie and uh, Nuno's, uh, Nuno's Fug HD there. 
Um, so we're going to have a couple of three wide moments here. So heading down towards turn one. Let's see what we can do here. Down into the break-in zone. We're on the inside. Um, so we're trying to go around the outside there as well. Oh, it's very tight, but we all survived it so far. Now, I knew what was going to happen here. So I was trying to go for the cutback here as best as I could. And um, so did the uh, the Frenchman. The Frenchman tried as well. A little tap. Nothing major there, though. Just racing as we then head towards the left. And uh, the goalie goes a little bit deep here. So once again, we're going to be three wide. Then we're going to be two wide. Uh, as then we come into here. I couldn't really do much there with uh, the Frenchman on my outside. So a good bit of racing, I suppose. A little bit of contact. That is fine, to be honest. We're all trying to race clean there. That I'm not, like, bothered about because... It's going to happen in this kind of car, to be honest. And you can see the brakes are just rubbish, but we'll talk about that in the track guide as well. So we're looking to get the move done here, side by side with the goalie. Good bit of racing here as well. Gives me room on the exit. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, through we go then. So into P5 we go again. There's our favourite person who, if you look on the radar, is about to launch it on two more people going into this corner. Um, so there, two people go into the corner. And then look at that arrow just randomly appear. And look who ends up in P5 there. Dude, or lady, or whoever you are, you're not very good. Just calm down on the brakes a little bit, okay? Because you can't dive bomb everybody, and you're not going to survive racing. Anyway, we continue to turn one, and the lap guide now is so heading towards turn one. We are using the start of this tarmac. with miles away from the tree that we normally use. That's how early you have to brake in this car, okay? So just be careful of that. So I'm braking here. I'm on full brakes already here. Just a little bit of slipstream in there. Um, as you see, the Frenchman goes to the inside now. We're in second gear here. No need to go to first at all in this car. As we then head towards this left, it's all about bouncing the car here. Just lifting off, trying to go for the cutback if possible. Not going to quite work here. Now, on the right side, on this green curve, there's lots of tyre marks. When it gets busy like that, that's what I use as a marker. I say this marker every single time we're here. It's a really good marker here. And then, as I said at the start of this race, if you want to get to the left on the cobbled bits, that's where all the grip is, and it just rotates the car very nicely. And you see that instantly there. It gives us a nice line then for the right-hander here to really get a good run through the corner. We could have done that a little bit faster, to be honest with you, but we haven't. We continue on all the same. So I wasn't sure where they were going to go here, so I go towards the left. But on the right side, where the GPD section goes, we're using the start of it now. Not the not the end where, you know, the last bit we see it. We're using the start of where we see it there. Uh, that's our brake marker in towards this left as we're trying to you know, keep it clean here. All good. And on the left-hand side, where the red and white curb ends, that's what I use here. And I also try and get the best line possible for the run down to the hairpin because that's where you can make some serious moves. So use that on the left-hand side here. So we chuck it in now, trying to go for an early acceleration here. This is the rear trying to step out a little bit. Steps out for the uh, French driver in front of me. So we're going to go try and go for the move down. Oh, now down towards the hairpin. Now on the left-hand side, we've got the usual grating, the grey bit area, whatever that is. Uh, I'm using the start of that for the brake marker here. So uh, that's what you use. Uh, we're going to go side by side in towards the hairpin. Got to be careful about out breaking ourselves here. And uh, maybe just a little bit, but we get room and we all survive. Happy days. See the car just get a little bit unsettled as well. This car, not good on brakes, gets unsettled quite easy as well. So I'm using brake bounce minus one, I think, as I lift through here to try and then, you know, keep the momentum going. Don't brake for that corner. It will unsettle the car absolutely massively, so just be careful of that. Heading towards the left end, uh, you're going to use the start of this tarmac again, not the end. Uh, you know, normally we're looking towards the end. The very start of this is worthwhile doing now. You saw earlier on, people were trying to dive down the inside here. So you do have to be careful of that. Um, but you really want to try and get a nice line for this. And you will really see the time gains on this second part then because you can get down here nice and easy uh, and through we go. So we're going to head towards the chicken now once again, of course. I've said it multiple times. The braking is dreadful. So we are braking early here. Uh, maybe a little bit earlier than we should do. But uh, anyway, as we head here, we're actually going to use the end or the other of this tarmac area. Not... I broke at the start here, use the end, I normally use it where it goes thick, but we're not here, it's like the 150 meter board essentially, if you want to use that instead, and might get wiped out with the carnage that could ensue. So you see, we're trying to get a nice line and keep the car balanced, and that's going to be worthwhile doing, you'll notice a lot of people oversteer there, uh, as we continue on, and we did break a little bit early for that, and look, white van man's back, we're going to use him again for this last corner, so basically when it's on the edge of your screen, break, happy days, turn in, you should make the corner, and you should be able to exit accordingly. Let's see, I've dropped to second gear and round we go. And that's going to be it for this one. I'd say it feels like a race A. It's definitely the same length as a race A, that is for sure. But uh, I think there's going to be more carnage at this one than Fuji, if I'm honest, because the car's a bit more unstable. I would do prefer this one. It feels more like a race car than the Crown. But there we go. 
Right, that's going to be it for race B then, and we're going to head to race C now, where we head to the UK and uh, one of my favourite circuits, which of course is Brands Hatch, as you can see in the background. And we're using the full circuit here as well. Let's have a look at the race details then, first of all. We are racing 13 laps here at Brands Hatch. It's a rolling start this time. We are on racing soft and medium, and both are required. So there is some strategy in here. Fuel usage times two, tyre wet times six. Now you can see I'm using the TT. You can see a lot of TTs in the background, to be honest with you. FF cars are going to dominate this week. Now, FF cars are more dominant when there's tyre wear, when there's softer compounds, because they have more grip, if all that makes sense. And because you have to use both tyres, it makes them even more dominant. So expect the TTs to dominate this one this week, if I'm honest. Um, obviously, with this being one of my favourite tracks, and I'm using one of the cars I've used the most in this game, um, it's quite a good one for me, to be honest. But I'll talk you through the race, a lap guide, uh, and uh, yeah, we have some good racing, as I say. So uh, let's jump to that now. Here we are then at the start. And you do see a Megan Trophy in there, but I'm not sure I'd go with it, to be honest. The only positive of the Megan Trophy is the fact you can go longer on the soft tyres. And maybe that would work out if you're starting in the lead. If you're starting in the mid-pack, I don't think it would work out, to be honest. Uh, but you can see we're starting P17 here in the Audi CT. I'm on medium tyres. I think if you're towards the back, you want to be on the medium tyre. I would say if you're probably P16 down, a two-stop may be better for you, uh, especially in an FF car. But, you know, you'll have to play that by ear, if I'm honest. Um, but we'll talk about strategy in a little bit. We're going to go straight into the lap guide, as we always do when it's a rolling start because it's much easier and brake balances of course are all down in the description heading towards turn one then depending on the car of course and tyre compound you're on you're going to break somewhere between one uh, the two and the one here uh, around about where the cones are if I'm honest with you using cones happy days it's normally in the middle of there uh, and uh, I do this in fourth gear to be honest as uh, we clip the curb there and uh, somebody way off to Narnia happy days enjoy your holiday um, on the left hand side then is a little bit of a, a red marker on the barrier use that as your marker um, it's a perfect market. It's one I use all the time here at Brands Hatch um, as we head in towards Druids. And now, I do this in third gear in an FF car just to save the tyres. Some people will want to do it in second, but you'll burn through your tyres more. So just be careful of that. If you head down towards the left here, uh, start the curb on the right hand side. That's what I use as a marker. Be careful about using it though because you'll aim for it. If you're looking for it, you'll aim for it. And if you clip your tyre on there, you will rotate the car or spin potentially and head off. Once again, to Narnia. As three we go, use all the curb on the exit. It's all there for you. It's pretty real estate, basically, as you head towards this left. On the right side, you see that barrier change there, the color change, and also the one marker there as well. Loads of markers for this one, but that's what I use. And basically, what you actually want to do is straight line it a bit and then come back. But I had to come back a little bit too early here. You see, I had to like sort of adjust. But normally, if you break it in a straight line and go on a wide and then come in at the very last second, the later the apex, you have a cracking run down this straight here. As we head towards the right hander here. Uh, and on the right side, we're using the barrier colour change once again there, the red. Um, now, I'm going to actually use a little bit after here because I'm in the TT. It's very good on its brakes. Um, but in other cars, you might want to use that or maybe even just before that. Uh, obviously, it depends on tyre compound and how bad your tyres have worn at that point. On the left-hand side then, again, we're going to use the barrier change there. Nice and easy at Brands Hatch. You're just looking for all these barrier changes. Very bright markers. Uh, and happy days. I just noticed the uh, Turkish flag highlighted there. Is uh, Lightning watching this at any point? Shout out to your Turkish um, compatriot there. Uh, so we continue now down Ingle Dell. And on the right side here, you're looking for that one marker. That's what I'm using for this one. I was always looking at the right here. Very rare for that to be taken out. So that is the perfect one to use there um, as we come through here. You want to clip the inside here. Oh, there's a Scirocco that's disappeared. As uh, we look on the right side, they've got the Marshall Post. I'm breaking early here because I'm right behind the Portuguese driver. And there's a cone off in Narnia there. But use the Marshalls there on the right hand side. Very good Marshalls to use. Um, as uh, we then, just as I say, we broke a bit early there. So we really use the inside. But it's cambered corner that as well. So you do want to get it really tucked up on the inside. Head towards the last corner then. You're going to use on the left-hand side here. There's that tarmac area. The start of that, basically. I'm breaking a bit early here again. Uh, but that's my marker, generally speaking. So, you know, depending on your tyres. Depends how close to that you want to be. Now, we're going to have to get into some racing now. As you see, there's three cars in front of me here. Three TTs. Um, it's TTs for days as we head towards Turn 1. So let's see what we can do on the Portuguese driver here. Uh, heading towards turn one, they go for the move, so I'm going to go, oh, happy days, you released the brake a bit too early there, mate. Through I go into P14. Heading towards Druid's end, can we make anything happen? Not quite so far. Uh, we've got uh, Marquina, we've got Wedgie Boy, <laughs> what, a, what a name, Wedgie Boy, shout out to you for that one. Uh, we've got Elmo, so uh, someone from the Muppets here. 
Elmo Lars. Um, oh, the Spaniard gave up there. That's interesting. Heading towards the left end. Let's see what we can do. Oh, Elmo goes a little bit deep. Uh, not going to quite work so far. Through we go. And we carry on up the hill. Oh, no, the Spaniard's back. Oh, maybe it's just... A, oh, well, that's weird, actually. I'd never even noticed that. So he's back. It was just a bit of lag, apparently. Um, but let's see what we can do then. Heading towards the right-hander. Fast right-hander. So you can make moves technically on the exit of here. Because a lot of people get this wrong, as you see in front of me. Elmo just gets a little bit wrong there. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about that. He went flying. <laughs> oh, he went flying. Oh, dear. My kid gets it wrong. I'm going to go behind Wedgie, boy. Uh, we're not going to give him a Wedgie today, though. As uh, we just found out. Look how many arrows are on the radar there. That's a bit scary. Uh, I think somebody died, but uh, not too sure. Anyway, into the left we go. Oh, where'd your boy? Getting a, a little bit wrong there. Oh, the, look at that. They're, they've got 18 on the side of the car. What a legend. Uh, we'll continue on all the same now. Uh, up into P11, though, so nice few moves there on that particular lap there. Lap 2 being very good for us. Uh, we are going to advance a bit further on while we catch up to the French driver here. GT Pro Man. Pro Man. Pro Man. Ooh. We're going to take Pro Man there on the left. Oh, I'm not sure. Is that like Toro Rosso version of the Red Bull? I don't know. I don't know F1 liveries, but we're going to take down the left hand side. Nice and easy here. Up into P10 on lap number four. Remember, we're on the medium tight here as well. So let's talk about strategy a little bit here. It's going to be very hard for an FF car to do seven, uh, sorry, eight laps on the soft tyre. So you might want to pit at the end of lap five. I decided not to and go with the extra one. Uh, but it's all going to be about traffic to some extent because if you get free air, and I had free air then for a couple of laps, I decided to, you know, I wasn't even going to pit because free air is good on brand hatch. It's very hard to overtake in the best of times. Um, so, you know, it's happy days there. Free air, we just you know, try and build our position that way. If you're not in free air, you might want to pit early just to go for an undercut. And that way you may be able to gain an advantage that way. As you see, we catch up to Wedgie Boy quite quickly here. He's stayed out an extra lap. The pit stops are very quick as well, which is why I think a two-stop might be worthwhile if you're like P16 backwards. Because you just do one lap on mediums, pit in, go on the softs, and catch up to everybody and go on the softs again. Uh, it's your choice, basically. But uh, you see here, I'm trying to cause a mistake, basically. That's what I'm trying to do here. Uh, you see the racing clean here. Uh, I had nowhere to go there. I was looking to try and go on the outside. I didn't quite do that. I accidentally hit the Spaniard in front. He waxed his hazards on. Not sure whether that was a thank you or not. I'm not too sure. But uh, apologies if, it, if you feel offended by that. But in towards the left we go. T. Lawrence has done seven laps on the sauce, um, and that's what I was aiming for here as well, seven laps on the sauce. The Spaniard lets me go there as well, so thank you very much, mate. Didn't have to do that. What we will do is, as we get around this corner, we'll whack on our hazards just to say thank you, and then we'll advance a bit further on. There we go. So we catch up to the next group of cars here, P7, P6, and P5. Now we see a Toyota. It's not an Audi, is it, Tidge? No. Um, yeah, well, this is what you're seeing, really, with other cars. Because tyre wear is not high enough, the FF cars can do very well here, and you just see, we just drive by them. Now, these are all on the medium tyres now, of course. They started on the soft tyre, so we've got a tyre advantage. We're very quick in this car anyway. You see we've got the fastest slap on the right side. So we're looking to try and get past very quickly. As you see, Coco just makes a bit of an error there. So we're looking, can we go past Murray? Not quite. We pull to the left here. Murray, Murray and Coco just going side by side. Coco gets a little bit wrong there. Sounds on the brakes a little bit. I hit Coco, unfortunately. Um, luckily, no SR down there. SR, oh, happy days. Thank you, Gran Turismo. Realising the error there, and uh, Mori goes a little bit deep now, so he's too fine hard. Obviously, it's costing me a little bit of time here. I know I can catch up to the podium here at this moment, so not going to quite work at the moment. As uh, we just get stuck behind Mori as well, just goes down there. Uh, let's see what we can do heading towards turn one. As you see, that's the McGann Trophy in the pit. So they've just come in on lap ten, and they're still there. You see what I mean? It's not worthwhile as we look to go down the inside of Mori. Quite a forceful overtake, but lots of room there. To be honest, he just left it open. So I went for it. He had lots of room on the exit as well. So we'll take that one. Uh, some of you might not be happy with that, but I thought that was a perfectly legitimate move there. As uh, we leave that corner. Uh, you notice I was in second gear. There. You can see how it wheel spins up, and that's going to cost you some tyre wear. Uh, I think maybe if you look after your tyres, you could do eight laps on the soft, but... It, it'd, be, it'd be hard, it'd be hard, let's be honest here, but it depends what you're trying to do in the race, you know, and different strategies as you see Coco go off there. That's what I mean about strategies. It's all about track placement and sort of, you know, if you can get past somebody um, in the pits or, you know, just in clean air, it's much better than going for moves like this because it's just going to cost you time. But even so, we get past the uh, McGann Trophy there, remember the McGann Trophy on fresh tyres, we're on worn softs and we still get the move done there, we slow down on the apex, happy days, uh, and we're going to keep that position, are we going to catch up to Fionn Lee though, that is the question, and no we're not, unfortunately not, but we do make some more ground here, 
Um, so, you know, we didn't do too bad as we took it into the right hand there. So congratulations to Lawrence, Cloudy and Fionn there. Getting the P1, 2 and 3 respectively. We're going to get P4, which is not a bad result in the grand scheme of it, from P17. I think we started, didn't it? can't even remember, but it was a while ago. And, uh, yeah, I did enjoy this race. I don't think a lot of people will enjoy it because it's FF dominated. It's Group 4. It's hard to overtake. But uh, I think you can have some good racing here. So, you know, you'll have to pick and choose with this one. It's not the best of weeks, to be honest with you. Uh, I'll put a live stream on there for you as well. Another video there if you want to check that out. My logo's there if you want to subscribe. Please do subscribe or like the video if you did like it. And leave a comment as always. But that's going to be it for me now, folks. Thanks very much for watching. I'll leave you with another video or live stream. Or I'll see you in one very soon.